SCP-3003 The End of History A utopia is a society in which there are no problems, and is more or less a perfect place to live for all residents. This is of course a fictional concept, one often seen in science fiction stories such as Star Trek. A utopia is unachievable, not only because perfection is, in general, unattainable, but also due to the inherent individuality of humans. If you could make everyone think and act the same way, you'd be on your way to creating some form of a perfect society, but you'd also lose what it means to be human. This is the concept we'll be looking at with SCP-3003, an alien world that blends some squicky body horror with a commentary on humanity. SCP-3003 is an Earth-sized planet, 208 light-years from Earth, orbiting a star similar to our Sun. There are four notable anomalies on this planet. The first is a beetle-like organism, referred to as Mars, that acts as a parasite in humans when infected with 3003-2. 3003-2 is a microorganism, capable of infecting both the Mars as well as humans, and modifies the behavior of both. Humans that have become infected with this microorganism comprise the entire native population of the planet, roughly 30 billion people. Finally, the people of SCP-3003 have managed to create a device capable of creating wormholes allowing them to travel across great distances, including to Earth. The planet itself seems quite similar to ours, with similar temperatures and biosphere, although the only organisms that are present on both planets are humans. Occupying 30% of 3003's land mass are the Mars, creatures that share a number of similarities with beetles, but hold a few key differences. They are capable of secreting a fiber similar to spider silk, referred to as silkate, and they can coat their bodies in a caustic fluid as a defense mechanism. In the wild, their lifespan is about 15 years, and they spend most of the time airborne, including performing reproduction. Most other species of life have been removed from SCP-3003, and the reason for that is because of SCP-3003 2, the microorganism. This organism infects the Mars through physical contact, and can also affect humans by entering their bloodstream. This infection is not normally found in wild Mars, but is instead purposefully administered to captive Mars by the human population of 3003. The reason for that is where things get a little disturbing. The microorganism changes the physiology and behavior of the Mars, causing them to develop a stinger on their heads. Come nightfall, they will then seek out the closest human, and use the stinger to inject a paralyzing agent. The stinger will also inject the microorganism at this time, infecting the human. Even worse, the Mars will then begin secreting a caustic fluid from their stinger, creating a large hole in the human's body. The Mars will enter the body and seal the hole shut with silicate. Since the microorganism cannot naturally reproduce inside a human body, the Mars acts as a sort of factory, living in the human's body and continually resupplying the microorganism so that the host is constantly infected. Lifespan for the Mars in this state is roughly three years. The presence of the microorganism inside a human drastically changes their behavior, making them practically entirely devoted to the well-being and spread of the Mars. Infected humans, who I'll refer to as bug people for simplicity, will begin to primarily pursue any activity that they believe will benefit the Mars, including raising countless infected Mars in reservations across the planet where they have plentiful food and no predators. Pleasurable activities will only be pursued if a bug person cannot perceive an action that would be beneficial to the Mars. Bug people's perspective on pleasure changes as well, 
as they react positively to any stimuli reminiscent of the Mars. This includes things that look, smell, sound, or feel like the Mars. Many parts of their cities are covered in a material that looks and feels like the skin of Mars, functioning as a form of public entertainment. Bug people also exhibit hyper-rational behavior, each individual capable of reasoning through every course of action to decide which is most beneficial to the Mars. Bug people also rarely act on emotions, easily discarding them when new information is received. Due to centuries of systematic selective breeding amongst the bug people population, they possess roughly 35% of the genetic diversity of Earth humans. This selective breeding has been carried out to highlight traits that make a human the best possible host for the Mars, as well as overall health, minimizing genetic illnesses and disabilities, and a resistance to common diseases. The ruling committee of bug people are planning to introduce artificial genes into the population, which would reduce resource consumption, make them immune to any Earth native pathogens, and increase their capacity for hosting Mars tenfold. If this plan goes through, the bug people would certainly become a distinct species from us. This sort of gene alteration is available to the bug people due to their highly advanced technology compared to our own. The bug people are capable of harnessing one-tenth of the energy that comes from their sun, which is incredibly impressive. Furthermore, while our planet consumes around half a zettajoule of energy every year, SCP-3003 consumes about 833 zettajoules every year. Beyond just their impressive solar technology, they have also developed quantum computers that can process massive amounts of data. The bug people use these quantum computers to devise and implement public policy, which in this case means calculating on a global scale what is best for the Mars. The bug people claim that they have developed true artificial intelligence using these computers but they possess an extremely strong taboo against AI, for reasons unknown. Any extensive questioning on the matter is met only with hostility. The taboo is so strong that, despite their advanced technology, they have refused to implement widespread automation, as well as introduce advanced robotics. The bug people cultivate only 13 different species of crops for food, each of them extensively genetically engineered for hardiness, disease tolerance, space efficiency, resource efficiency, and nutritional value. The bug people's space travel technology does not substantially exceed that of the foundations, and it seems they haven't put too much effort in moving beyond their solar system. They have, however, visited each of the other planets in their system numerous times, and have a small habitat on another planet. Their most impressive piece of technology, at least known to the Foundation, is a massive facility occupying 113 square kilometers in one of their polar regions. This facility is capable of creating wormholes between it and any other point in space. The creation of a wormhole requires approximately a zettajoule of energy, which, as I mentioned, is double our planet's current annual energy consumption and they've been mostly using it to scout out planets that they think might be suitable for expansion. Of course, the bug people have their eyes on our planet, as we possess plenty of humans, and an atmosphere that would certainly be hospitable to the Mars. The Foundation believes that Earth would inevitably lose a war against the bug people, and so they've taken steps to prevent conflict. A mobile task force has been sent in to integrate themselves amongst the bug people in order to delay research, falsify information about Earth, and find out as much as they can about the wormhole device. The bug people have also sent over several researchers to Earth to learn more about our planet, and they are constantly monitored. The Foundation informed the bug people that Earth is currently contaminated by an unknown agent that renders Mars sterile and also makes humans incapable of hosting Mars. 
the bug people are apparently completely foreign to the concept of deceit, as it has no place in their society, and so introduction of deceit to them in other ways is forbidden. Agents sent to SCP-3003 have uncovered a number of interesting tidbits relating to Bug People's society. Infected Mars first appeared on the planet around 500 years ago, and the first people they came across were a mundane mercantile society. This society became the Bug People, and they quickly wiped out or assimilated most of the 7,000 other cultures present at the time. The rest were wiped out after the bug people eliminated any species that preyed on Mars, leading to an ecological collapse. The bug people speak a language practically identical to Dutch, although none of the other historical languages on 3003 match any Earth language, making it a rather odd coincidence. 95% of bug people live in urban areas, each city averaging 30 million in population located in areas of mild weather and little geological risks. The cities are designed generally for maximum productivity and efficiency, and can be difficult for an earth human to adjust to. Rather than wide streets and corridors that give people a fairly wide berth of one another, bug people streets are narrower than the hallways of an office building. Young bug people are raised in groups of 100 to 300 by specialists, and they are first implanted with a Mars when they are between 15 and 18 months old. Additional Mars are added to the child's body as they grow, until the age of 17, at which point they are holding roughly one Mars for every 3 kilograms of body weight, or 6.5 pounds. In other words, the average bug person contains perhaps a couple dozen of these beetle creatures inside of their bodies for the rest of their lives, as Mars are continually replaced as they die off. As you might expect, this isn't exactly healthy, and the bug people suffer from some medical issues as a result of this degree of infestation. These issues include inattentiveness, fatigue, and stress and one of the Foundation doctors recalls a time when they accidentally tripped over a cable, at which point two bug people came over to escort them to a medical facility. The bug people are evaluated throughout their childhood to determine what assignment would be best for them when they reach proper age. Adults spend generally 10 hours per day working their jobs, with the rest of the time spent eating, sleeping, exercising, receiving education, or entertaining themselves almost always with some stimuli relating to the Mars. Common entertainment activities include touching lumps produced by Mars infection, either on their own bodies or others, listening to audio recordings of Mars swarms, visiting Mars enclosures, or wrapping themselves in garments reminiscent of Mars skin. As mentioned earlier, the bug people use computers to analyze data which determine public policy. But there is also a ruling council, which handles collecting and reading various reports, in order to take care of any planet-wide situations, for which the computers cannot account. Their decisions in these cases are publicly broadcast to the rest of the bug people, who comply of their own accord. Direct interaction between bug people is usually for the purpose of sharing useful info, or coordinating activities, mostly within the context of a job. Despite the Foundation's efforts, they still have practically no information about reproduction amongst the bug people, as they refuse to talk about it or allude to it. The Foundation doctors overall refer to the bug people as overgrown, highly literate children, barely capable of small talk and pleasantries, due to their focus on their utilitarian society. They can't even understand the concept of friendship, it seems and their only real personality differences are just their different ways of loving Mars. One bug person will draw Mars on their bedpost whenever one of theirs dies. Another will cut out Mars sacks from dead bodies to keep them. One will write fictionalized accounts of Mars living in the wild, and others might memorize sections of Mars's genetic code. Deviance from these normal practices on 3003 is very uncommon, 
and only occurs due to incomplete infection by the microorganism or some previously unidentified divergence in the brain. As soon as deviant behavior is detected, other bug people will restrain the deviant and bring them to the nearest facility for evaluation. When illness, old age, or deviance renders a bug person unable to contribute to society, they are taken in and their body tissues are used for transplants. This is apparently done while the subject is still alive, leading them to die in unbearable pain during the process. Despite the fact that the bug people can grow organs in a lab, this is simply more efficient. The Foundation has assured the bug people that they are taking every effort to make Earth hospitable for the Mars. In reality, of course, they are constantly looking for a way to neutralize the threat of SCP-3003, and the O5 Council has approved of its neutralization as soon as the Foundation can come up with a good plan to do so. The ruling Council of 3003 have informed the Foundation that within 30 years, it will be capable of traveling to and terraforming other distant planets, at which point it will be practically impossible for the Foundation to fully contain the bug people. The final addendum is from a doctor stationed on SCP-3003, about an unusual incident with one of the bug people. The doctor was on an elevator with a bug person when it pulled a panel off of the wall and yanked some cords, causing the elevator to stop. It told the doctor that it wanted some alone time with her, and didn't want to make a scene. Realizing that this was extremely uncommon behavior for a bug person, she asked what it was. The entity reveals that it is more or less its own SCP, something with a knack for adapting to new situations. It says that 500 years ago, it saw a two-legged species with limitless potential, and it made them its own. It basically is a hive mind that exists within the microorganisms. It then tells the doctor to give up their resistance, since it knows that Earth is not immune to the microorganisms or inhospitable to the Mars. When asked why Earth should submit, it goes on to say that it can free us from war and conflict, giving us all a single purpose. There is no violence, hate, deception, or scarcity in the bug people society, and each person is ecstatic about the value in their lives. The doctor retorts with what the bug people do to the old, the sickly, and the deviant, and what they did to the other people on this planet, and what they did to babies before they learned they had to wait a year before giving them Mars. It replies that it can change some things if need be, as it's flexible, but right now the people of Earth have a choice to let it in or not, and in 30 years, they won't have that choice anymore. The doctor says that it will keep going and going, spreading its reach without end, and they are determined to stop it. It responds by saying that the point of this endeavor is to escape the end, and while the people of Earth try to protect themselves from their inevitable end, it is working to make sure that there is nothing that can come after it. In other words, it is the end. You might remember at the start that I said SCP-3003 blends squicky body horror with a commentary on humanity. I'm sure the body horror aspect is fairly obvious now, but the commentary perhaps not. Essentially, the entire piece is a criticism of capitalism and colonialism, a society fully stripped of its individuality and humanity. I'm not one that really enjoys allegorical notions in horror, but regardless of your feelings about the intent behind the SCP, it's still a somewhat disturbing article. Whether or not the Foundation can eliminate the weird, Dutch-speaking, beetle hive mind, or if they'll continue spreading across the stars, remains to be seen. But ultimately, it's the similarities between our two planets that make SCP-3003 so unsettling.